Boys and gentlemen, we're here. Welcome into In the Bag, episode 92. ABB, how you doing today? Hey, I am doing well. It is, uh, we're starting to get a little peak of some spring weather up here. Not necessarily today, but got to get out and play this week. Um, feeling a little better this week than I was last week. I didn't shoot my best at the weekly by any means, but started seeing some stuff come together. Just focusing on not trying to kill the disc anymore. Just like playing, I, I believe the guy's called an old man golf a little bit. So I'm kind of playing that. Just shot placement. No, don't be afraid to take the par. And I'm, I'm just trying to get back in the, the swing of playing a little bit more. Yeah. Um, so it's fun. We've got a lot of stuff coming through the warehouse. We've got fun events we're planning. We're talking, you know, we've got a lot of stuff going on. You can tell it's about to be spring and uh, about time to for disc golf to fully kick back in. So I'm excited. I'm sure you're feeling that way too down in your area as well. Yeah, it's been a weird like week of excitement for disc golf because like I've shot, I shot a lot of videos this week. I'm trying to get silos back ahead in terms mm -hmm. of like, being a couple of weeks out. And so I, one morning or one day I filmed this week and I had on like tights underneath my pants, pants, shirt, hoodie, shirt on top of the hoodie and went and played. Cause it was like, it was truly in the thirties while I was trying to play. And I was like, mm -hmm. dang. And then the next day, literally shorts and a t-shirt. Mm -hmm. So, uh, I, I want to be in the disc golf bug. I want to feel the warm weather coming around. Uh, and I'm getting excited. I've got my first sanctioned tournament uh, in April nice. uh, after taking a year off. So um, I'm trying to get the game dialed in and get it focused up. So it's been it's been really fun on here. Uh, but we also had some fun things going on just in the bag wise. We've got new merch uh, that is out and available over at foundationdisc.com mm -hmm. that you can check out. But one of the big things was we did a giveaway over on our Instagram that we just launched because well, we got a whole bunch of... We're kind of spreading into new channels. Foundation podcasts are spreading out. And so that copy of Birdie Pro for our visual watchers that Brad so marvelously displayed, uh, mm -hmm. we're going to announce the winner. It has been chosen. Uh, we're going to announce the winner to uh, at the end of the podcast after our guest comes on. So, um, but yeah, so we're branching off to new channels. We'll talk about that a little more once again, when we get to the winner of the giveaway, because y'all, we got an awesome guest today, new FPO player. Very she's excited. gonna tear it up very excited to have her on today yeah so um yeah she gets, gets to jo join a very short list of the female guests we have again not for any particular reason just hasn't been that many available that want to be on the podcast so very grateful for her and i love giving like another perspective on the game and um if you are a um a person that's like starting to play i, I don't think it matters like you know what particular division you're playing. And I think there's a lot we can learn from each other in that respect. And I, I'm looking at her bag already because Robbie sent it to me and I, I'm like this, this, uh, so Jennifer's made a ton of notes in disc RPM, which is one of my favorite features there. So I'm excited to talk through all of those notes with her and really see kind of where her game's progressing. And, um, I guess a little spoiler, she's starting to play some more, uh, in, uh FPO events. So it'll be interesting to hear how her bag's changing just from that. So let's go ahead and have her in Robbie and we'll get to talking about this. Game on. Welcome in to the podcast. We have with us a, a FBO player and Jennifer Smiley. Jennifer, how are you doing today? Hey, I'm doing great. Thank you so much for having me. So stoked to have you here. I We we were saying before recording and everything, uh, a small list of female guests, not because we're like not actively trying to find female guests, but I am sure you feel this, Jennifer, like our sport is just not that big on the female side of things right now. Yeah. Yeah, it's there's not very many FPO players or just female players in general, so understandable. <laughs> but it's great, and like I, I said before, you came in. I think regardless if you're playing FPO, MPO, or you're playing MA4, it doesn't matter. I mean, I think what's going to be cool about this discussion with you, Jennifer, is there's going to be number one, all you MVP fans are going to be stoked because this is an all MVP episode. Um, and you know, spoiler, but I think your shirt for our visual listeners kind of gives that away, but it's kind of interesting. <laughs> someone who was just kind of like playing for fun. Now you're kind of getting more serious and you're looking to play an FPO. I think a lot of people can learn some lessons for, from the bag building, but also just kind of like technique and like theory behind what it is you're looking for, what kind of shot shapes you need for your bag and maybe some overlap. And then why is there, why is there that overlap? So I think I'm looking forward to that. And also maybe the best background of any guests we had have had so far. I mean, she's out in a park right now for those of you who can't see if you're just on an audio only, but 
nice nice setup. We can hear some bird chirping in the background, nice ambiance. So very excited wow. to get into the episode. Yeah. Um, so Jennifer, we want our we want our guests to get to know you uh, because I've had the pleasure of getting to play around with you. Um, Brad said he got to meet you when you did you play Battle for Bedford or Commonwealth Games? What, I did. I played uh, Battle for Bedford. Yep. Okay. I do remember you coming to the tent. I when I saw you come on, I was, I was like, I think I know this name, Robbie. Game on. So uh, Jennifer, how long have you been playing disc golf? Um. So. I like to say I really started in 2021. I technically first picked up a disc in like October of 2019, but Mm -hmm. I went out and played one round and I hated it so much. I like never went back out again. Um, But then in college, I did a research project on um, basically trying to figure out who would be an up and coming player in the FPO division. And so I watched a bunch of like Jomez Pro and like Central Coast trying to like figure out all the nuances of the game and I got really into it. And then I started playing like all the time. And I entered my first tournament in I think August 1st. Yeah, August 1st of 2021. Okay. Come on. Uh, I know what really impressed me is when we met last year. you had uh, it's when people talk about touring pros they immediately go to pro tour right like that is okay we we have these people um that are at the top top level i think one thing that people forget about in the history of our sport especially because we have a lot of like our sport is predominantly covid golfers right now Mm -hmm. Uh, like there are a lot of new faces inside the sport we think about like the Matios of the world who back in the day, Matteo was playing 52, at least eight years. It felt like a year because the man was just gr- on that grind. He made the tour when the tour wasn't really crazy big. The national tour was out there, but they were kind of sporadic and there weren't a ton of them. Um, so there's your, there's your birds, Brad. Yeah. Um, so I, I, when I met you, you were actually in Birmingham and you were going on this like mini tour at the end of last year. Uh, Mm -hmm. So how do you know how many events you've played? Like how many sanctioned events have you played? Do you have an idea? Um, I want to say it's over 80. I think I've won 42. So I think, yeah, around 80 tournaments. Uh, Okay, yeah. So <laughs> if I'm looking at the if I make uh, the right Jennifer Smiley, what uh, PGA one eight four seven three six. Yeah. Okay, yeah. She has played eighty one events, y'all, and she has won forty two. That is first off, right. impressive. Uh, <laughs> I'm pretty sure you have won more events than lots of folks have literally ever played in. Uh, <laughs> so that's awesome. Twenty twenty three, you played in thirty seven events last year that is awesome that is awesome so uh jennifer let's get to know your game uh let's get to know your game we're going to talk about that we're going to talk about stuff that's in your bag but really i want to focus in on this moving from a open bag player to a uh one manufacturer bag type of deal um so we have a couple questions we ask our folks to get to know them so if we were to put you in a field jennifer and we were like we're going to put a basket x amount of feet away from you how far do you feel like you can consistently reach that basket on accurate golf lines? It's really what we're looking for, uh, for backhand and forehand. Um, my backhand is definitely a lot better. I'd say I feel super like confident getting pretty close to the basket from 200 feet and in just for like any shot. I pretty much expect myself to land really close to the basket. Perfect. And then yeah. I'd say probably 300 is where I feel like I'm still pretty accurate. And then when it gets over 300, that's when like I might not quite be as close to the basket as I'd like to be. Um, and then forehand, it's a work in progress. It's definitely gotten better, but I really only use it for approaches or if I absolutely have to off the tee. (laughs) So uh, you'll see, I have a lot of flippy discs in my bag that are 
design that I can throw it on like this much hyzer and it'll still turn and drift to the right. Mm -hmm. So. <laughs> okay. Okay. I love it. I love it. That's, uh, I, I, I love the, I like the confidence ranges and mm -hmm. I completely like even, I can only imagine how much you've improved since we played together last year. Um, and I think that 300 feet was accurate last year when we played and I know you've been on the grind. So, um, mm -hmm. I respect that a lot. So let's talk putting. We put you on the putting green and we're like, all right, you got to make 10 putts from 15 feet, 10 putts from 25 feet and 10 putts from 40 feet. How many are you making at each station? Um, 15, definitely expect myself to make all of them. Um, 25, about the same. I feel like putting is probably the biggest strength that I have. Um, and then 40 feet, I'd say at least half. Uh, I kind of expect myself to make things like 45 feet and in. And then if it's outside, then it's like, okay. And if I miss a 40 footer, I'm not going to be like hard on myself, but mm. you know, I do kind of expect to make those. <laughs> That's and fair. So question for you, and maybe this is a difference on like the level in which you compete, but is that like common for other FPO players? Do you see most of your competitors like ah, 40 feet and in, we're all dangerous or is that like somewhere where you're kind of breaking away from the pack? I'd say that's probably somewhere I'm breaking away from the pack. I think there are some really fantastic putters out there. Um, but I would probably say that I am like above average on the putting green for sure. Okay. And, yeah. And I think that's an interesting, and I think it's okay. Cause obviously you're not throwing 500 feet, right? You're right. throwing like an accurate, consistent 300 feet, but that also gives you a much bigger, I guess, area of error. I'm going to call it if you're yeah. approaching and you're like, Oh man, I landed 30 feet, but Hey, I got this. And that's, it, and it sounds like that's where you're probably picking up a lot of strokes on your competitors. Yeah. Yeah. Is like on the putting green. I, I definitely think so. Like my most recent tournament, my last round, I think I only missed three putts and only one of them was inside circle. So like putting is definitely my strength and yeah, I gain a lot of strokes, but also I kind of make up for the lack of distance that I have because of it. And one, one final thing, I don't think I've really asked, we've asked this much, but I think I know the answer, but what, it, what is your like secret sauce to getting good at putting? Like, what is it that you feel like is making you excel at putting? Um, practice. I think everyone wow. says Weird. that though. Yeah. Um, I just kind of like, how many putts are you doing a day on average? Uh, it, I don't know. I don't really count. I mostly just go out and then practice until I start to like get a little tired or my focus isn't there. And then I'll kind of stop because when you lose focus, then you're not like practicing good form essentially. So mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> I love that. Yep. Yeah, no, that's great. <laughs> Um, I just, I, I, I think I knew, I knew the answer going into it, but I just wanted, I just wanted to confirm that, you know, if you practice, you do get better. Oh, Very yes. weird concept. Yeah. And I was I not a good putter to start with either. So it's practice. <laughs> yeah. I, it's like, I cannot tell you how much I am trying to stress every time I talk about practice putting, telling people like, stop putting a pitch count on it. Stop saying, Oh, I got to make a hundred putts today. Oh, I got to make 200 putts today. I got to do this. Like, I love that because that session could change. Like if you're in the mood and you're in the zone, you get out there and putt for an hour and not mm -hmm. even realize you're putting for an hour. And then you get another day where it's like, life's been frustrating. I got out there for 10 minutes and that's all I had in me today. And I like, and both are equally good. Like, yeah. so, and we need both because it's tough if you're not a touring player to commit an hour to putting every day. So, yeah. but then I think that intimidation could back people away of like, well, I don't have an hour to commit, so I just can't practice putt at all. Uh, this, it's like dieting. You know, I, I really like eating a Snickers bar every now and again. So I guess I'll just never be on a diet. Like, <laughs> yeah. no, I'll just eat the Snickers occasionally, dude. Uh, it's it's going to be fine. Um, okay. So Jennifer, the you were playing you were an open bag player mm -hmm. and then mvp comes and they're like hey we want you to join the team first off did you get any other offers 
Are you allowed to share that? Um, you know, I don't think that I signed anything that said I couldn't. So I okay. was previously before MVP was even an option. I was, I guess I applied for team disc mania, like one of their teams. I forget which one okay. it was exactly. Um, and I actually mm -hmm. got a response back. Um, but it was around the time that I met Raven Newsom, who is basically the sole reason I'm on team MVP. <laughs> like he, uh, put in a great word for me and kind of, I guess, talked me up, uh, to Andrew and everyone at MVP. And then they saw how well I did at, um, I think it was the Lewiston ladies classic up in New York. And, uh, then they decided to sign me. So it was really exciting, but yeah, I was briefly in talks with Discmania, and I think they're a great company. Um, but MVP just kind of fit my game a little bit better. Nice. Yeah. I, when she says that I, I really appreciate you can already see it coming through Jennifer, your humility is impressive. Uh, like I think it's, it's very difficult when you're very good at something to be like, I'm just good. Uh, like, mm -hmm. cause it's, it, there's really no way to say that without coming across as arrogant. Right. Um, yeah. but when she says they were impressed with how she did at the Lewis and ladies championship. Yeah. I, she won it. Uh, everyone, she won and she won by five strokes. Uh, so she killed the field. Uh, let's just go ahead and call it what it is. Uh, so let me let will brag on you, Jennifer. How's that sound? You, <laughs> okay. you stay humble. We'll hype you up. Um, so you're on, uh, team MVP. You switch to the bag. What MVP molds were already in your bag that you were excited to kind of maybe explore even deeper? Um, let's start there. Um, I had several molds that were in my bag. I think like the main one that I was obsessed with was the crave and I'm still obsessed with it. It is amazing. It's my favorite disc. Um, yeah, she has four in her bag currently. Yeah. I used I to have see. more, um, but I can't fit any more in my bag. So <laughs> I'm like the type of person if, like, I'm just so worried about losing a disc on the course that I will carry backups while I play just in case anything happens. So, yeah, it was a slight problem. Uh, <laughs> but definitely the Crave and also the Wave. That has always been, like, my main distance driver, especially in the lightweight like fission plastic. Um, mm -hmm. and then actually my envy has been in my bag since I started playing and I actually have a wow. tournament ace with it too. So <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah. Come on. They, uh, okay. So three great molds. I love mm -hmm. that. I think they are classics. The crave slept on a lot. Um, looking at the craves you have in your bag, um, You've got three fission craves that are all super lightweight. Yeah. <laughs> um, so talk to us about you, you. One thing that I really appreciate about disc RPM in general is that you can put notes in on the discs. Mm -hmm. So y'all, we want you to go check out her bag. You can check it out in the bag community disc RPM. Uh, and another cool thing is that like when she starts killing it, cause she is playing multiple FPO like tournaments this year. Uh, like, you can always update it. And so people can follow along and see what's in your bag and things like that. Like, Oh, Jennifer's on lead car coverage. Sick. Uh, I wonder what she's throwing. And they see a yellow disc. And they got disc RPM pulled up and they're like, Oh yeah, that's the flippy crave. Okay, cool, 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 cool. Mm -hmm. Um, so sh you have a ton of notes in there. So I don't want to make you have to feel like redundant in terms of r saying everything that's on there. So because of that, we're not going to cover everything in your bag. So sure. for audio listeners or visual listeners, feel free to go back through and read it. Um, but you got the four craves. Talk to us the difference between them and especially on the three fission flippy ones. Yeah. What is there a difference between them? Yeah. Yeah. So um, hold on. I guess I can pull them out. Um, they are... So 
this one was my first one, and this kind of started the love for the Crave. And how it flew originally for me was like Heiser flip, like dead straight, and then would fade a little bit. Um, I've gotten a lot better since then. Uh, so this one, along with just being really beat in, I will start on a hyzer, it'll flip up, and then it'll just go right for an eternity. Um, awesome. It's great. It's especially because I'm not as confident with a forehand. Having a disc that has that type of a shape is very useful. So that one, it's almost getting to the point where it's like not as usable though. Uh, but I still think it's great in like high tailwinds and everything. <laughs> Um, cause I do tend to throw everything on a little bit of hyzer. Awesome. So it looks like, and again, I'm looking at your notes here that you made to so thank you again for that. But do you think that your like, uh, like lime green, the, the crave with the cat on it is going to maybe replace that orange crave eventually? I think so. I think first the blue one will, um, mm -hmm. because it has like a pretty decent drift, right? But it does still fight back a little bit at the end. Um, mm -hmm. And so I think the blue one would probably replace it first, but I'm also, I've been working on my form a lot in the past two weeks, especially. And mm -hmm. I, a lot of the discs in my bag right now are, are kind of, uh, on the extreme flippy side. And so I think I'm going to have to like get some heavier weight versions of them in my bag soon. Okay. That makes sense. That was that was my okay. So that was my question. Following up on that, but I want to know real fast. So you have the uh, desire crave in the bag, uh, and then the cause the first ever crave. No, the first ever crave was the super flippy one. Yeah. You have the cosmic neutron. Yes. Uh, what's the difference between the green and the cosmic neutron? This one's much more stable and it handles wind a little bit better. So this one, I can flip it up to flat just fine, but it will fade. Like it doesn't really turn over unless the headwind's pretty strong. Um, mm. But I'll still throw it if the headwind's strong, I'll just put it on more nicer. <laughs> okay. And then green is just like super straight. You don't have to worry about it turning over too much. Yeah, yeah, I like it because if I'm like, say there is like a pond or something on the right hand side, but I still want like, like my max distance crave shot, uh, the green one comes out a lot for that. Yeah. So, okay. So two, two follow up questions here. Uh, this is why I'm very excited for this because like the questions I had some formulated to go mm -hmm. and it was like, Jennifer knows her game really well. So she's going to open up like so many thought bubbles in my head and I apologize. I'm just going to overwhelm you with them. No. So, um, one of the first things is Brad even mentioned it in the intro right now. I think especially a lot of guys when they play, we just want to like, we're so big and strong. Like that's my impression of men. Uh, and so we're out here trying to rip discs all the time. Your form is super smooth. Um, I want to give you a chance to plug your socials as well. So people can follow along in your journey. Um, but your form is super smooth. So when you have super flippy discs, are there times where you're like, oh, I'm going to power down on this, but then that just makes your form even smoother. And therefore those flippy discs are still like getting the extra pop and the juice on them. Is that happening to you? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. It does happen. And I really love throwing these like if I'm close to a tree and I'm worried about running up, I throw these for standstills a lot and I'll still get the same flight from them uh, and still a lot of distance, which I really like and appreciate. I always say that like the Crave is just easy distance. Uh, like you don't really have to throw very far to get it to go far. That makes mm. any sense. <laughs> Yeah, totally. Well, yeah, for sure. And I, yeah, what Robbie's alluding to, I said, you know, I've been, I've been in a bit of a golfing slump, a disc golf slump over the last like month and I'm just not scoring well. I, it's like everything's broken. Mm -hmm. Um, so this week when we played our foundation weekly, I just kind of like, I call it old man golf, but I just was like, all right, I'm going to hit, I'm going to hit a, a line. I'm going to lay up. I'm going to take my pars. I'm going to take my medicine and Hey, I played a lot better. And I also, 
I think the thing is I am I've gained more distance, but I've also gained a lot of error to get said distance. So I'm actually making a lot more errors trying to pump stuff out versus just playing like the smooth golf that I know I can play. Mm -hmm. So I think you're making a very good point with your craves is, you know, it's really about the form and that you're getting and that's what's really giving you not only the distance, but the scoring opportunities. Like the consistency is more important than the distance. I'll even I'll say that. But put that on my gravestone. Yeah. That's that's kind of like a similar thing I've always told myself is like I want more distance, but I'm not really willing to sacrifice my accuracy to get the distance. And so I feel like I've kind of been like slowly creeping up where I probably could have like jumped up a little bit faster, but I play in so many tournaments that I like just am not willing to sacrifice that accuracy. Yeah. yeah. See, I, I took, I took the fruit. You were not tempted by it. I did. And you know, in, in a field, I'm like, man, I can throw 50 feet farther than I could like six months ago, but I also am scoring five to six strokes higher than I was six months ago because mm -hmm. I'm trying to do that. So I think it's a good point. Good. Just thing to shout out to everybody. Like, you know, and I think you're saying that Jennifer, just focus on your form and how smooth that is. And then let the disc do the work and don't worry about killing it for distance because you can score better. Yeah. with your consistency and accuracy. Mm -hmm. um, my question, Robbie, I want to jump to some other uh, areas of the bag if you're done with the craves. Uh, I I have one question that will be kind of overarching Okay, that could also help and then Brad take away. Uh, never forget, two years ago, I want to say, it was that uh, Madison Walker joins Team MVP. And this post... I will never forget it. So Madison joins the team and she's like, Hey, I'm looking for lighter weight. Oh yeah. Gyro. Mm -hmm. And the internet hated MVP because they said like, basically MVP had to come out and go, Hey, we actually don't have any lightweight stuff in our warehouse. Mm -hmm. So community, we would, if you're willing and able to help hook Madison up with all of this, we will offset you sending her the discs because we straight up just don't have them. Um, so cool moment of not being like, Hey, we just need y'all to help us out. Y'all are the best. Like they actually did. I think a lot of people forgot that MVP actually helped pay to make that possible. Um, but you obviously carry a lot of lightweight stuff. So, for people that are hearing easy distance on the crave, 147 gram fission craves, that sounds like a dream to so much of our audience. Mm -hmm. Where are you finding this kind of stuff? And do you have a lot of backups prepped or are you kind of like flying on the razor's edge? Yeah. So I MVP has been great in the past few years, like when they came out with the fission plastic, um, I, oh gosh, I must've got this one like three years ago and I did have a couple of backups, um, but not to where I was comfortable. And I actually played in a tournament up in Pennsylvania and it was an all women's tournament and the player pack was essentially lightweight fission craves and I was playing FPO so I didn't get one and I went up to them afterwards because they had so many left over and I was like hey can I buy these off of you and so I got like gosh like 10 discs for like $20 or something ridiculous it was nuts they're like yeah sure and I just grabbed as many as I could and I was like is this okay and they're like yeah so I have a ton of them and I think a lot of people are scared of throwing lightweight stuff. They're like, you know, like Simon Lazat and Paul McBeth don't throw like 148 like fission stuff. And I'm like, yeah, but they also throw like 700 feet. So they don't really need it, you know? But um, I think just throw whatever works for you. And if a lightweight version gives you the flight that you want, then go for it. Like a lot of people when I first posted videos, they were like, that's not how a crave flies. And I'm like, it does when it's lightweight and it matches your arm speed. Like, go for it. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. That's great. Um, yeah. Yeah, so that, that's amazing. Yeah, and I think there, there's, like, the MVP collecting community is, like, insane, too. So, there, I mean, I think if people really wanted to dig in and find it, and I will say, 
just from a someone who's a wholesaler that's ordering MVP um, when it's available. Uh, I know they're ramping up stuff. They've moved facilities. I'm not knocking on them at all. I get it. Um, but they are putting a lot more lightweight stuff available on their ordering form too. So they're really trying to like expand that whole that whole realm. I think they know they have something. So just you know. And then, like, like the correct the collecting group is insane. So I'm sure mm-hmm. that you can find them if you're willing to pay for them out there. Um, so what I really want to talk to you, and this is from personal experience. This is not me speaking to your game, Jennifer. Just my own. I know, especially um, when I wasn't throwing like super far. Not that I throw super far now, but there was not a whole lot of difference between like my mid ranges at one point and my like 11 speeds. Right. Um, mm-hmm. I. I'm going to go ahead and assume that you are a lot, you have a lot more touch and a lot. So like you're going to be able to, and you're playing FPS. So maybe a 20 foot difference really makes a difference on a particular shot you're throwing. Right. Um, But I think sometimes for me, it's like shot selection. Like, okay, I know this, I know this hole coming up is, you know, let's say 300 feet. Right. I, I know I can get my fairway driver there. I also can get my mid range there. And I also can get my throwing putter there. Um, can we, can you talk about like what it is really, what's the, I mean, I, let's talk about what is driving your decision. Like, okay, I need that straight to slightly overstate or slightly stable shot. It's just like your typical par three, you know, finishes a little to the left. You know, when are you choosing like a crave? When are you choosing like your straight hex or when are you going to throw like, um, an envy or something like your envy that's like a little straighter? Like what is what's your sh- shot selection like in your head when you step up to a tee for those that particular type of shot? Yeah, I mean, it honestly depends. Like if there's danger behind the basket, I'm more likely to throw something that I am not going to be concerned about going too far. And I will say, like tournament distance for me is a real thing. Like I think I throw like almost fifty feet further in tournaments sometimes, and so. Mm-hmm. Like, if I'm really concerned about that, I will, like, if it's a 300-foot shot, I'll sometimes just disc down to my crave. Because if I hit it right, it can go 300 feet. And if it comes up a little short, that's perfectly fine. Um, If I'm worried about something in front, like some OB or hazard in front of the basket, then I'll probably disc up just to make sure I'll go past the basket. And as long as I'm within, like, 30 feet past the basket, I feel like pretty confident that I'll make that comebacker. So um, I'll probably mm-hmm. disc up to either a nine or an 11 speed. And then, okay. and then, yeah, yeah. between your crave and your hex, right? Do you, do you throw your craves and your hexes about the same distance or are you getting some more out of your crave? I think the crave goes a little bit further. I throw the hex for like, there's like an in-between range for my putters like I can probably throw them like 320 to 325 or 225. Sorry, not 300, 225. Um, and then there's like a gap between like the 260 up, which is where I throw my crave. And so that's kind of where the hex comes in. I think it doesn't it. like go quite as far as the qu- the crave does. So yeah, but it's a similar shot shape. Right. So you so if you're going to for you if you're going to your hexes, you're wanting like a putter like touch type shot but you need the distance whereas you're not looking for like that driver speed possible like flare skip off the ground you're really looking for more of a placement shot probably with your hex yeah yeah definitely a little bit more placement but i will say because like the craves like a six and a half speed it it can skip a little bit but the like edge is so like small that it doesn't really skip too far so It's more like, am I, if I'm a little worried about it turning too much, I'll probably pull out, like I have this dragon eye hex and that one's like, which is amazingly (laughs) beautiful. Yeah. That's uh, a shout out to my sponsor. Three times now. Uh, yeah. Uh, Howie from chains or die. Uh, he died that for me. He's my die sponsor and he's absolutely amazing. Um, but that's like my straight to like stable finish. That Mm -hmm. one doesn't really turn over for me. Uh, So if I'm like, you know, I can't have anything turn over and I know I'm getting a little bit more power and I'm worried Mm -hmm. about my crave drifting at all, then I'll throw the hex, even though it'll it'll land like a little bit shorter than my crave would. But yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, interesting. Yeah, so like, I'm asking this question very because I throw FDs and hexes. So FD is a seven speed that has a very similar probably flight that your craves do, and I have three of them in my bag. So I, and I have three hexes in my bag. So I have like a very similar setup to you. Mm -hmm. And what I do, I find myself a lot. I feel like I make the wrong decision on when to go with FD versus hex because I can definitely throw them both equally as far. And it's just like a matter of like, what's the shot choice I'm trying to make. So I always like to ask people that have like a similar setup, like what your thought process is, because I really do feel like I'm making the wrong decision a lot of the time. So it is good to hear like, you know, like what you're doing, what you're, what, what you're picking and why. Yeah. Um, sticking with the mid ranges, I see you have a detour and an uplink. If, if anyone has been a fan of this show for a long time, you know that I love the uplink. I think it's one of the best. And it's, you know, it's funny. I've been ignoring it a lot lately and I've just picked it up the last couple of weeks and remember why I love it so much. Um, I tried out the new detour that came in the, uh, the MVP um, mystery box. And for me, the new detour, and I don't know if you threw them, was like extremely flippy. Like it almost like touched the uplink slot for me. Do, do you feel that way or what's your experience like detour versus uplink and what do you use them for? Yeah, so I actually bought a mystery box just so I could get a detour early because I um, was kind of like unsure for a, a while about what mid ranges I wanted in my bag. And I basically just wanted a crave that was like shorter, you know? And uh, I was like, oh, man, the detour is going to be perfect. Like, I can't wait. And I'd actually thrown one of Ravens previously. And I was like, man, that disc is, that's money. Like, I can't wait. And I had the same experience. It was, it was too flippy. And I was so confused. Um, mm. But uh, I was able to get, a, Raven got a bunch in the mail. And he let me choose one. And that one is definitely not as flippy as the one that came in those boxes. Um, I... I'm not sure if it'll stay in the bag. It's kind of like, it's very new, but I like it for like very, um, like touchy approaches, like ones where I'm not like full powering anything. I'm just kind of mm. like throwing it in this, like letting it slowly drift. Um, the uplink, I have to put on like an insane amount of hyzer mm -hmm. to get it to <laughs> do what I want. Um, otherwise it just like, completely turns into a roller so it's definitely mm -hmm. more usable so yeah i guess it, it'll just depend on your arm speed whether the uplink or the detour is more what you're looking for yeah yeah and with your experience in beating in vision plastic with your craves i i definitely see that world where that hex mm -hmm. just kind of slowly works its way over and you're like oh yeah i guess we just don't really need these two molds uh because then you can just put in a brand new hex and Good to yeah. go. Uh, so, okay. I I love that. Um, I want to go ahead and bring the conversation home a little bit. And let's talk about the future uh, for Jennifer Smiley. Mm -hmm. 2024, the year that Jennifer meets the Pro Tour. So, you have, once again, I'm going to brag on her. Uh, you were a playoff away from being a major champion. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, us women's last year, FA one, Jennifer goes into a playoff with a no name. Who's not on this show. No, uh, <laughs> I, I kid, I kid, I kid, I kid. Um, she goes to a playoff with Virginia polking home. Um, and obviously we sadly know the result of that. So you've got yeah. experience playing at a high level. You have over $1,500 in career earnings. So you're not, you're not a schmuck when it comes to competing. What are your thoughts heading into playing pro tours this year? Uh, and second, you're currently registered for six, you're registered for five and us women's. So six pro tour events. What, which two are you most excited for? Oh gosh. Um, I, I'm always super excited for us women's that's, I've always done really well there and I'm, I'm not expect like, I think my first year I was, I came third place last year, second in a playoff. I'm not expecting that this year, obviously, but there's just kind of something special about us women's that 
you don't really find at other tournaments. Like the layouts are always really great. Everyone's super friendly. You get to hang out with so many like wonderful like female disc golfers. And so that one I'm always super excited about. And then, oh gosh, I don't know. I'm, I'm really excited for all of the pro tour stops. I was lucky enough to be granted a silver, like partial tour card for this year. So that means I have access to six events. And so, um, my sixth one, I think I'm going to use for Ledgestone. Um, but I'm also, I'm, basically trying to tour full-time this year so hopefully i can get into all of the other ones as well but i'd love it okay. if i could make it into like maple hill that one would be crazy yeah. <laughs> that'd be amazing are uh do they they do monday qualifiers for fpo as well right yes they normally do yeah okay so are you is your plan just kind of you're on on the wait list that you need to be on and then if you don't get in the wait list be there monday to play the qualifier kind of a deal yeah yep that's the plan and i think i might i'm gonna like try and play in as many a tiers as possible as well so some of those might be like qualifying events and so you know if that happens that's great but i'll probably be in a lot of monday qualifiers <laughs> I love it. I love it. Well, we wish you the best of luck in your Absolutely. journey. Jennifer, thank you so much for coming on. Uh, plug, take a second, plug your socials. So let people know where they can find you. Yeah, absolutely. So um, I'm on Instagram. I'm just JS underscore disc golf. And then I actually have a blog called disc golf with Jen. I haven't posted on there in a little while, but I'm planning on starting that back up. So if you're interested, you can follow me there. And then also, I just want to quickly say thank you to my sponsors, MVP, for like, you know, giving me this opportunity because without them, I wouldn't be on the Pro Tour this year. Uh, and then also Howie from Chains or Die. And then I was recently sponsored by Patriot Disc Golf, which is a store in Tennessee, I believe. So, yeah. Nice. Nice. Well, congratulations once again, Jennifer, uh, in the bag is rooting for you. And we are stoked to see how the year goes for you. Thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you so much for having me. We did it. Boom. What a delightful human being. I know she was so nice when I met her at battle for Bedford too. She's just, that's not fake. That's just who she is. So I know I'm rooting for her. Robbie. I think you, you can say you're rooting for her as well. I'm going to be eagerly checking the standings and I, I hope to see her pop off. That would be great. Yeah, I would love that. So, uh, grateful for Jennifer, grateful for her coming on. Uh, and if you are a female listener or, you know, a female listener that wants to come on the show, we are more like, we want to have more female guests come on the show. So, uh, mm -hmm. super stoked for that opportunity. Speaking of things we're super stoked for Brad, we've got some changes coming in a little over a month. One of them has already mm -hmm. started. We started an Instagram, uh, in the bag pod. You can check it out. Uh, and we are, we're posting stuff. Uh, we're going to have things going on over there. Also in a month, we're moving over to our own YouTube channel. So mm -hmm. you guys are going to have to go support us there. Uh, because the real key mm -hmm. is we got to get to a thousand subscribers like quickly, quickly. Uh, that mm -hmm. way we can turn it around. Uh, we'll get the watch hours and all that going eventually. Yeah. But, uh, we, uh, yeah. I would love your support uh, over on that channel. We will let you know when it like is live, uh, but just putting that in your your heads up. But we have a thousand community members in Disc RPM immediately. Almost eleven hundred. Yeah, yeah, you guys have killed it. So we're are awesome. we're giving away a copy of Birdie Pro, and our winner with the drum roll is going to be Mister AJ Lewis two sixteen. AJ oh. Lewis 216, the star T bird. Yep. The star T bird got you. The the green star T bird. So hey, we will um and just a reminder, he was in Disc RPM. He did follow us on Instagram and he left a comment of his favorite disc. We were checking all those things. So thank you, AJ, for all your support and all those different channels. And um I will reach out to you from the in the bag Instagram and via DM and get your uh shipping details and we'll get this shipped out to you this week. So thank you so much for that. Thank you to all of you that are supporting all those things and oh hey just a, as a side note oh, oh. i want to shout out somebody that i got to meet in the store oh this yeah week. dan dan you know who you are it dan. was a pleasure talking to you he's been in the bag fan for a minute 
he was such a just delightful human being to just talk. And, you know, we hung out in the store for a minute. We talked about some discs and he picked up some orders he had there and picked himself up a, a pioneer and a practice bag. And he's, he's all in Dan's all in with foundation and Atlas and everything we do. He's a Robbie C fan. So Dan, come on, Dan, it was a pleasure meeting you, man. Thanks for, uh, thanks for stopping. And it was great to talk to you. I just Dude. wanted to give a shout out, you know? Yeah. I mean, that's, I, we love, it's my favorite thing. We are excited to see each other's faces every week, but we would do that even if we weren't doing this podcast. So, mm -hmm. uh, the fact that we get to gather and see each other's faces for you, the listener mm -hmm. makes it all the worth it. So, uh, but one of the ways that it is possible is not only is the listening, you guys listening, but you support us through foundation disc.com. Brad, what's new in the warehouse this week? All right. So this week we have, oh, and I actually have them right here. Ooh. The brave, the brave drops. The brave. This week. Yeah. I mean, Can't stop the chop, baby. <laughs> yeah this guy i mean it, it's making me think about the fd i'm like is the fd where i want to the hill i want to die on or do i want to throw this brave it feels so good so for my sake and my scoring sake i'm not going to pick one up but i think you should it looks it feels incredible they fly so, so good dude i know don't tell me that but um i might throw so one for good. warehouse guys throw and i know i'm going to fall Danger. in love with it that's Danger. why i haven't done it i know i know but those drop um also, the Isaac Robinson um, collection from Prodigy Drops as well. Um, maybe some of the most beautiful discs I've ever seen. Like the, the swirls on the A2s specifically, they're like, just blow my mind. They're so good. Uh, also, Prodigy dropped uh, quite a few of their molds in glow plastic, their new glow. So uh, those are dropping this week. And Ledgestone drops on Friday at 7 p.m. So after you've probably heard this podcast and if you're a watcher just as you started watching this podcast uh that first wave drops there's some cool stuff there's some cool um uv glow heats and there's some glow zones for you glow folks there's also some really interesting like jawbreaker nukes which are very interesting do we know what wave the crystal rattlers are this one because we have them I know, I know. Brother, I'm going to have to snag a crystal rattler. I am so intrigued by this frisbee, dude. I know. I, I picked it up. I'm like, what is going on? So it was, uh, yeah, definitely, As if you're a lid fan, that's like a, that's like bro. a bro. That's not even a lid. Um, but yeah, I'll, I'll ship one out to you, Robbie. They're, oh they're, my they're, gosh, look for that video. It's going to be, I love that disc. Yeah, you Woo! can both play disc golf with this disc and you can eat your soup out of it, which is great. If you Eat want your to soup, feed your dog, get a yeah. birdie, literally all in the same hole. All, all the things. So yeah, make sure you check those out. Um, uh, there, there are some new, in, um, just foundation merch in general up. There's a, um, if you're a Trevor trivia fan, there's a Trevor trivia shirt. There's a, um, am I right boys? I think that's out at this point. There's that shirt going up. There's also, if you saw, um, the, uh, foundation birdie. video and birdie, the dog, there is a birdie, the dog shirt. If you are a fan, so make sure you check that out. Uh, Rumor has it the guys are going to uh, send Birdie home maybe with a little gift as well. So we'll, we'll keep you updated on that. Uh, make sure you check out the, that merch. And hey, while you're throwing some merch in your cart and some apparel, check out the In the Bag apparel section. Uh, a lot of you have already done that. Thank you for that. We've got uh, hoodies. We've got T-shirts, hats, coffee mugs, you, you name it. It's in there. Uh, we're going to continue to work on that collection. If there's something that's not in there that you want to see, let us know in the comments and we'll make sure we get that design up so you all can do it. I think... It's time for a episode fifty six jersey. I think it's just it's just time. It's it's been time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, but yeah, make sure you check all that stuff out there. Uh, we're also doing like a slow cast of plast and DGA restock. Those are slowly getting up on the site. Recently restocked is your best friend. Make sure you check that out. And as you're checking out those discs, and you get them in the mail, and you take them out, and you throw them, and you fall in love with them, you know if it's good, you, just, you know there's one place to put them. Keep it in the bag. We'll yeah. see you next week. Yeah.